Hello and welcome to Health Live at Seniors Today. We wish you a very happy new year and hope 2021 is happy, healthy and prosperous for all of us. We have here today Dr. Monica Das. Uh, to those of you who are regular at uh, the Health Live at Seniors Today uh, uh, seminars every Saturday, uh, you would have met Dr. Monica Das in the past. Well, for those of you who are new, let me uh, do an introduction to her. Uh, Dr. Das is a chartered psychologist, uh, a chartered scientist and an associate fellow of the British Psychological Society in the UK. Professionally, she has counseled over 12,500 individuals in a span of 20 years and has published several papers in both Indian and international journals. A trained pianist and a vocalist from the Trinity College of Music London, Dr. Das has influenced many lives with a joyful learning of music. She has been actively involved in several popular musicals such as The Sound of Music, Joseph and His Amazing Technical at Rome, Train Court, and so on. Uh, she firmly believes that any extracurricular activity can help tap into one's potential and bring out the best in an individual. We've had uh, uh, sessions of uh, uh, the counseling forum in the past and uh, uh, the response to which has been tremendous. And we are delighted Dr. that Dr. Das has been here with us uh, uh, now once a month because we've decided to have this on the first Saturday of the month. And uh, uh, really happy that you are here once again, Dr. Das. Thank you. And Thank happy you. to you. How, how was the happy new year? New year. Oh, I had a great time, quiet, but a good time with uh, friends on the 31st. And uh, how's the COVID scene? Uh, you are in Aurangabad in uh, India. Uh, it's it's uh, quietened down. Uh, we have less number of cases, but with the new strain coming in, who knows what's going to happen now? So we're all um, we're all watching and waiting. Yeah, you know we've received uh, 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 a, a few questions already, but uh, would you before that uh, like to say make some opening remarks and, and you know how the thoughts that. You know, I'm sure that you got some feedback on on last time's sessions, and uh, and and what you think are uh, perhaps newer areas to look to look at and pay attention to. And you know, I would request uh, uh, people who have come in already to post their questions here on the Zoom Q and A tab. And those of you who are on Facebook can uh, post the questions there, and we will pose it to uh, pose them to Dr. Das. Yeah, over to you. Thank you. Um, you know, there are a whole lot of areas we've covered in the past, uh, right from, um, you know, assisted living, accommodation, uh, living with family, um, dealing with family members, uh, finances, etc. cetera. Um, one very important area which I feel um, we uh, could sort of look at maybe today or uh, in the near future is actually dealing with relationships because, um, you know, if a relationship is successful um, and if you have a good understanding, whether it's with your children or um, your spouse or uh, friends, um, you really go a long way and life becomes uh, wealthier, happier, and uh, much more fruitful for the individual. So I, I, you know, it's something we could look at uh, either today or later. Um, and in terms of um, just building a, a successful life for oneself, uh, mentally, emotionally, and um, otherwise, uh, you know, to, to combine everything and bring it together is uh, something we could discuss as and when it arises. So these are a couple of areas um, I thought we could um, perhaps approach either today or later. Yeah, absolutely. I think this relationships issue, of course, we have a few questions on relationships also that have, that have been raised today. And um, uh, with your permission, I'll right, get right into the questions. Okay, please. Uh, so we have a question, who, you know, and we've given the option to people to pose them as anonymous attendees. Uh, so the first question is, my wife and I stay with my son as we've sold our house for him so he can buy a new home in Navi Mumbai. Now his behavior has changed. He is, we have given him whatever he, whatever we have in terms of money, and now we are kind of stuck. Please help. 
I know we've answered this question in the past. Yeah. Uh, but since this has been raised. Um, uh, this business of, you know, handing over all your wealth and your, I mean, all, whatever you have, whether it's your home or your money, et cetera, um, is, is really something that I think all of us, as we grow older, we uh, really need to take into cognizance. Um, a, please don't hand over your money to everybody and anybody that easily. B, as long as you are, your mental faculties are working and as long as you are physically capable of um, living a normal and good life, um, you need to be in control of your finances. So in this particular situation, and I've heard many stories in the past where uh, you just hand over um, everything to the children, um, their attitude changes. And it's a very, um, I mean, it seems to be a, a, a normal uh, phenomena everywhere the world over. Um, and basically they then become, get, uh, they're in control of you rather than vice versa, you being in control of yourself and your situation and your surroundings. So in this case, you suddenly have somebody else dictating terms to you, and it's all because of money. And as you know, as you probably know, money makes the world go round. Um, and this is the case in homes also. So please don't hand over your money, your property, uh, anything that is, um, you know, help that helps you live your life in a normal manner. Don't hand it over till such time that you feel you cannot manage anymore. You could be well into your 80s, and then decide. But um, we, we need to figure this out. You probably need, a, I don't know who, a, a, a good lawyer maybe to help you out with the situation. But once you've handed over something, how do you get it back from them? You know, so you would need a, a, somebody to help you out with this, um, probably a good lawyer to start with. And uh, maybe a family friend who could perhaps uh, uh, try and uh, get this, you know, your children to understand what's going on, your son, um, and uh, his responsibility in terms of looking after you all without dictating terms to you and making life as miserable as possible for you. Uh, I yeah. hope I've answered your question. Yeah, and we have a similar question um, from another person who says, my daughter and her husband have issues due to me she has been insisting that I stay with her, but my son-in-law is against it. I can feel a lot of tension in their relationship as, as they are planning to have a child. I have financial concerns. Otherwise, I would have opted to live in a senior living community. Uh, please advise what I should do. This is tough. You know, it's a catch-22. You've got financial issues. You need some, you're dependent on your daughter. Ideally, you shouldn't be staying with them. Um, more so from the reason, not because um, you know, you're not wanted, but just in terms of family dynamics. Um, many son-in-laws don't want um, uh, you know, the, the wife's, uh, I mean, the wife's, yeah, parents, mother, father, uh, landing up at home. I mean, they, they don't mind um, uh, this happening for a couple of days, but you know, Indian men, I'm sorry, are um, pretty self-centered in many ways. Um, so for them, their family, their mother, father uh, have a priority over the woman's. Uh, so we still live in, in, in those times even now, although we are into 2021. But from a practical point of view, if you could um, get them to maybe help you out to, um, you know, so that you could move out into a um, another place where uh, there is care, uh, an assisted living center or somewhere. So, you know, they could split the, the finances, you would be independent um, and uh, you would be happier and they would be happier. They'd get their own space uh, with a little baby coming along. Uh, it's not easy, but they will need you finally when the baby arrives. Let me tell you, they will require you to help out. So there's a lot uh, to consider in this, but definitely not uh, the the um, the sadness and the grief that occurs while uh, you know you're pulling along. So I think you really need to be wise on how to handle this situation. Right. Uh, we have another question which says my husband is diagnosed with 
dementia. And I find it very difficult to manage things these days. His behavior is very rough with me and he hits me without any reason. I've kind of lost faith, all faith in his recovery. Do, do senior citizen care centers take care of such patients? Can I yes, ma'am. Can yes. I do them while professionals take care of my husband? You you need to move you need to move him into a a, a place. Um, for example, there's something called Epoch Elder Care in um, both in Gurgaon and they have a place in Pune also. Um, so I would suggest you look them up and um, um, you know consider moving him because it's it's very difficult to live with somebody who's abusive and um, physically um, well, physically abusive. Um, and you don't want to get beaten black, black, black and blue every day. So in all fairness, you need to move him out and then, um, you know, make sure that uh, you go over maybe two or three times a week so that he knows and feels secure um, when he sees you. Um, but you, it, you can't handle this on your own and particularly if you don't have any other family members helping you out. Otherwise, you know, you'll end up with problems and then there'll be an added problem to that and you won't be able to manage. So you really need to uh, work on this very quickly. So I want to just repeat, it's called EPOCH, E-P-O-C-H, Elder Care. And uh, it's basically they have a, uh, they look at assisted living, they help with dementia. So um, if, if you'd like, I can give you the phone number. If you've got a pen, you can jot it down. It's uh, 098 Double nine six eight one five nine five. They have two places in Gurgaon and one in um, in Pune. So you can look at the Pune one uh, to start with, and then take it from there. Um, what I've also done is I have put the uh, oh, great. contact Thank in you. the chat window, so people can see that. Uh, we have a question which has come in. Um, which is uh, my son and his wife live with us in my home. My daughter-in-law keeps instigating my wife against me and we are fighting almost every day. My wife just won't understand what our daughter-in-law is up to. I'm a very loving parent and I have been very nice with my children. I can't understand this behavior. What should I do? Sit your daughter-in-law down and talk to her. Your daughter-in-law and your son. So both of them have a, a family conversation about this and uh, uh, the behavior that's occurring and uh, what's upsetting you um, and try and figure out through the conversation because if she's trying to instigate your mother and your wife against you, um, you need to find out what the reason is. Is, is. is she setting you up? What is she trying to do? What is she trying to do? Is she trying to destabilize the whole situation so that you'll walk out of the house finally? Um, is she trying to take over? What is she trying to do? So you need to have a very uh, frank uh, and uh, proper conversation. Don't get into an argument and uh, you know a major fight about it, but try and figure your way out and, and speak to your son about it. Uh, he needs to take control also. I mean, he's very much part of the family. So where is he in all this? And uh, why is he not helping out? You know, if you're close to your son and if you're a loving parent, as you said you were, um, he needs to be very much involved to figure his way out. Maybe he should speak to his wife, but a lot of the time it doesn't work. So you need to sit down and have a conversation. Um, there needs to be a give, bit of give and take in this conversation, but try and find your way through and uh, see where she's coming from. What is it that's annoying her? Most likely it sounds like she wants to take over the, the you know, where you stay and uh, be in charge. Thank you. Thank you for the response. We have a, we have something in the chat window, which uh, uh, so this lady Archita Sopti, I guess she is using this to advertise uh, her assisted living home. But since this is uh, for the service of uh, uh, senior, nice. that's yeah. fine. Uh, so she's talking about Auburn Senior and Assisted Living, which is also opening very soon in South City. Guru Gram, and uh, they have a special dementia care program. So, uh, and she has given the URL, uh, the site address on the chat. Wonderful. Window. Pick up the chat window and uh, uh, in fact, those of you who have some connects and 
who are aware of it, please put them on the chat window and we'll be happy to, uh, uh, you know, talk about it. Uh, we have uh, another person who's suggesting, please conduct a seminar on legal rights of citizens, of senior citizens. So, uh, Mr. Narendra Shah, thank you for the uh, suggestion. I must tell you, we, you know, and I'll put the link over here in a, in a bit, but uh, in, as part of Seniors Today magazine and on the Seniors Today website, we have been carrying uh, views on the rights of senior citizens uh, on a regular basis. So if you go to the Seniors Today website, which is seniorstoday.in, you will find uh, 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 you know, fairly authentic and good advice uh, on the legal front for senior citizens. But uh, uh, we'll be happy to have a session uh, soon and we'll, we'll take, take up your advice. Uh, uh, Dr. Das, we have another question which is coming from uh, a reader who says, I live alone, my son is in Kuwait. My wife passed away in March, 2020. My son works in an oil and gas company and stays in his, stays in staff quarters. He sends me the money, calls me every day. Still, I feel neglected. What can I do? Can you get involved um, in some kind of community service? Um, you know, you need to uh, take yourself, push yourself forward. You need to be more proactive. Um, nothing's going to fall into your lap if you're just going to be sitting at home. In terms of comfort, I think you've got everything because your son is sending you enough, you know, to be comfortable. So you really need to keep your mind occupied and you need to keep yourself um, emotionally busy so that you feel fulfilled. Um, try and figure out a way where, you know, you can get involved um, either with a group of elders and you have uh, something to do with them or you get involved in some kind of social uh, work activity, which keeps you busy for a couple of hours. Um, you know, we all have a routine, whether it's in terms of exercising, eating, um, meeting friends, etc. So in between, while we do all this other stuff, um, socializing, meeting people, um, doing some kind of community work, um, maybe perhaps helping somebody out with, you know, with whatever gifts you have, uh, helping some youngsters out um, is very rewarding in itself. So uh, depending on what you've specialized in, uh, it's not about you earning money, but it's about you giving to somebody. So if you find or you find your way through and you um, meet somebody who maybe needs help in a particular area uh, where you have the expertise, um, this sort of thing can help out and you'll feel a lot more fulfilled. So the basic crux over here is you getting busy, doing something constructive, finding things which you enjoy doing and get, um, you know, which are fulfilling for you. So you please don't just sit at home. The idea is to get proactive. That's the main thing. Right. Uh, we have a question from Sanjay Bhatia who says I'm 61. Uh, by the way, to everybody else here, in case you want to post questions anonymously, you can do that. In case you haven't posed it anonymously, then I will take your name. Uh, so Mr. Bhatia says I'm 61. My wife died 23 years back while she gave birth to my son. I take care and I took care of him uh, all these years. Believe me, I do all the household work and I've been performing my all my duties as a single parent. My son somehow does not respect me. Whenever I speak with him, he gets up and goes away. I always try to speak with him very nicely, but somehow it's not working. I just want he should speak with me in a normal way. Can you guide me on this? So I was just saying that under normal circumstances, you normally have a mother, father dealing with uh, all issues uh, concerned with uh, bringing up children. In this case, uh, having lost your wife, um, and you having had to take on the role of both mother and father. Um, I don't think it's been easy on your son. And I don't know whether you've, you realize that uh, both ma a man and a woman have their own roles to play in this whole business of uh, bringing up children. 
and i'm sure you've meant well in terms of trying to do the right thing um uh, perhaps in you know trying to manage on your own um if you have your your mother or even your wife's uh, mother around or you know a, a sister who's your sister or a family member who's loving and caring uh you really need to break through to this young man because uh, he's an angry person and uh, i think he feels um, in his own way he feels as though he's missing out on something so a lot of the time this sort of behavior is generally because they're angry about something now for all you know he may be blaming himself um, for his mother's death you i don't know whether you've ever spoken to him about this subject and i'm sorry to bring it up in this uh, manner uh, with you uh but there are a lot of emotional issues that come up when you lose your mother um and i don't i don't know i don't think you've ever had a conversation with him on this subject so if if ever by mistake um did you have if you've ever blamed him for the death of your wife even it's if it's by mistake uh, in terms of maybe a raised voice or you know an argument that you've had um that's something that's going to settle down and sink into the individual and that's going to stay forever so i think you there's a lot you need to work out and if you've not done this that's fantastic but you need help from the outside um particularly caring family members who could um, advise you and and play their own role in you know softening the edges uh, around this young man because he he's angry and he's hurting and he needs help you you know this question that we had received earlier about uh uh someone saying that my son and his wife uh uh live with us in my home uh and the, the daughter in law keeps instigating now this person has sent another question says i have spoken to my daughter in law by us of no use i'm being pushed in a corner and suddenly everyone is against even my wife for 45 years it's almost as if she's taking revenge for the fights in our youth she is a spendthrift and i have worked very hard to save the money and even now i still contribute majority majorly to run the house what should i do can i walk out of the house and take my money and go uh this is a tough situation is the if is this your own home can you answer me quickly if it's your own home you can't walk out Uh, if it's uh, if it's their home uh, then you uh, have to walk out you you follow me because if it's their home they're in control they don't so, want you anymore so this person has said yes it is my own home then they need to move out why are they there because if they are in your home with all due respect to you and the uh, the youngsters why are they bullying you why is she trying to take control and why is she setting your wife up against you why is your wife succumb to all this if you like i can help you out in terms of individual counseling so that that offer stays uh, stays and i'm i'm very happy to uh, work with you all on this but the point is why is your wife getting instigated and if it's in your home you have to be in control you set the rules you know obviously uh, uh, with, with a little bit of liberty here and there but you're not you shouldn't be taking any nonsense you're paying for everything you are um, in charge you take control but be very clear what you want and make sure they understand that you want to live your life peacefully in a, a conducive manner and you want to remain happy and you don't want this kind of unpleasantness so you really need to have a family meeting sir don't just talk to her because she's obviously not interested in listening to you so either you speak to your son and get through to him and try and get him to figure out what's going on and then you have a private conversation with your wife you know and under no circumstances should she be and why is she involved in this mess why is she allowing this to happen so somewhere the the equation seems to have gone out of hand um does this girl the daughter in law of yours uh, think that you know the, the wife should be in charge i mean there, there's a this is an imbalanced equation so try and figure out what they're trying to do are they trying to throw you out of the house finally 
Yeah, so this person has again messaged because obviously he is um, you know, listening to you, he's watching you. He says, my wife sides with them. Which, yeah, so the person has just said that my wife sides with them. No, no, I've understood that, but why does she side with them? What is it? Is it something in your behavior that's unreasonable? You, you really need to figure this one out. I mean, and if your wife has not had a problem with you earlier, because you all have been married for a long time, and she's not had issues with you, why is it suddenly that there are issues? So is it you as an individual and your behavior pattern that has changed that is making them upset? Or, or what? I mean, that, 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 that's something you need to figure out with the, your son and your wife. And why is this lady in charge? And why is she um, uh, taking control in such a, uh, in such a, what's she trying to do? I really think she's trying to move you out of the house. So finally you leave and you walk out and then they'll be left there to be uh, living happily ever after. After that, they uh, will then pounce on your wife and then she'll be the next target. Have you understood? Yeah, so I would, I would request this uh, person to get in touch with us and in, in case you need any further consultation with uh, Dr. Das and we'll connect you. In the meantime, we have a question from an anonymous attendee. And today, the kind of questions are, uh, if you notice, they are slightly different from where they were last time. And this one is uh, saying, my wife behaves in a manner I can't understand. She complains about difficulty in doing some work, like say talk, taking the washed clothes out and when the maid off, offers to help, she refuses. She seems to always project like she is suffering. I'm 70 and my wife is 68. We live with my son and daughter-in-law. You know, there are people who are born uh, uh, sufferers, complainers, um, who feel they, you know, carry the whole burden of the world on their shoulders, um, and the world can't do without them until you know they 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 get things done. So we've got all types of people in our life. Um, but remember that uh, if you've got help, um, yeah, firstly you need she needs to understand that she can't manage anything. I, I mean everything. Uh, secondly. Um, it, if the, the the complaining bit or the self-sufferance which is going on from her side um, is happening a bit too much, uh, you need to figure it out. I think you need to A, move, get, give your wife, yourself space so that you're not getting irritated about this continuously. Uh, secondly, um, tell her to stop uh, complaining. You know, tell, tell her, it's, you, you know, there, there, there's a limit to this uh, uh, level of the amount of complaining that she's doing um, and have a frank conversation with her about the things she can manage and the, the things she cannot manage. Um, and as long as you have help in the house, which you do and you're blessed with that, she needs to take advantage of that. So uh, the, 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 this is important. I, you know, these, these people who are the self-suffering um, uh, people who feel the world can't do without them uh, really need to um, be not exactly put in their place, but things need to be uh, explained to them clearly. Right, thank you. We have a question from Sham Mahajan who says, I'm a practicing dental implantologist. Love to work and help patients. I, we have two children in the US and one with us in India. Family dynamics make me stay in the US for at least two or three months. I miss working. How can I balance? If family gatherings are taking you to the US um, and you're enjoying that and that's an important part of your life, uh, even though it's two months uh, at a time, either you lessen that period and you come back um, sooner, or you just have to mentally adjust. But um, you obviously can't practice in the States. Um, so you'd need to figure this one out and find out what's the best um, equation for you. Um, why do you go for two months, for example? Do you have to be there for two months? So that's something you can uh, figure out and 
you know the world is small today you can just go for three or four weeks and come back you don't necessarily have to be there for a long period of time and you could if uh, your you know financial status status is uh, comfortable enough you could make uh, two or three trips a year rather than just um, staying for a long period of time um your work is important i mean that that's your life and soul but so is your family so try and figure this one out uh, thanks we have a question from dr narendra from narendra shah uh, who says how to overcome unknown fear i'm not able to express myself fully but what is the solution uh, to overcome unknown fear handle the situation so unknown fear you need to you need to actually meet a, a psychologist not from the point of view that there's anything wrong with you um, uh, mentally or emotionally but they would help you um, try and trace back certain events or certain circumstances in your life which uh, perhaps have set you up into the situation without you realizing um so fear doesn't just stem from nothing fear stems from an experience or a situation or whatever it is or uh, you know even a, a story that you have heard but it's it it all ends up with an experience whether in terms of uh, real life or it could be the experience of um, you know just hearing it uh, or maybe physically seeing it on television i'm just trying to give you uh, an idea of what experience uh, means so an experience can be anything uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be involved in a situation for you to be fearful of it so somebody like a psychologist or a clinical psychologist or even a counselor and if they're good at their job they'll be able to take you back in time a little bit um and and just slowly try and bring out uh, situations and then maybe uh, try and link up and you find a uh, you find the common factors to why you're fearful and what you're fearful about you need to find out what you're fearful about is it the future is it being alone is it growing older um is it lack of friends you know there are so many things that one can be fearful about so and fear can be i mean you can be afraid of snakes for example i'm just giving you random examples so you need to really uh, come down to the crux as to what is making you fearful and somebody who is experienced enough will will bring you there slowly will you know find the answer for you uh we have another question which is a little general in today's day and age should parents live with their children it depends on how old you are and it also depends on how fit mentally fit and physically fit you are and i've said this before in some of my sessions i feel that um couples should be independent i'm elderly i'm talking about elderly couples should be independent for as long as they can um handle your own lives your own homes your you know your finances etc Uh, plus you have the space and you have um, the ability to make your own decisions without being dictated to by any child or uh, i mean by any uh, uh, yeah by your children or their spouses so uh, this is an extremely important part of for our, all of us while we're growing up we all feel that you know our children are going to take care of us um, say x number of years down the line um let me tell you when you were young you were busy also and i'm very sure that you didn't have that much of time for your parents as they were growing older pretty much sure it's the same case with all of us and this is actually what life is about so life is all about you know uh, bringing in children into the world making them independent having families happy families as much as one can have um make helping them to stand on their feet and letting them go forward without you being dependent on them for as long as you can because they need that freedom they need that time to move on and if you're there many feel obliged happily obliged to look after you but then the irritation the arguments all the the negative things that um, happen between uh, people in any relationship 
that is bound to arise. So instead, be independent for as long as you can um, and make your own decisions, you know, uh, and if you're financially stable, uh, all the more reason and let them come and meet you as often as they can spend a couple of days, spend quality time, but you live your life. Thank you. Very well said. Uh, we have a question from Mohan Purandre who asks, how to minimize quarrels between us when we are together 24 by 7? You know, uh, this COVID of 2020 seems to have uh, put families together, but more so spouses together longer than usual. Um, but we're all used to our own space. And uh, you still have to find that. Um, now, a lot of, um, uh, pardon me for saying so, and you can, I mean, I, I don't mean to upset anybody on the show. You know, a lot of men who've retired and who had led very busy lives um, at work suddenly have nothing else to do. And uh, this COVID situation seems to have brought on uh, a whole lot of other things where, you know, they're the, the busy poking their nose into this and that and 20 other things, where, whereas their wives have managed pretty much uh, capably, um, say, for the last 30, 40 years. Um, remember that they are also coming from a situation of having kept themselves extremely busy for about 40 or 50 years of their lives, coming into a situation where um, they suddenly don't have anything to do. And that's why this business of finding something constructive to do is very important, both for a man and a woman, but particularly for a man, because ladies still have their houses to run and other things to see to, whereas a man doesn't necessarily want to run a home 24 seven. So when you're put together, forces put you together like COVID-19, um, or, yeah, COVID-19, um, you have to find space and uh, very clearly say so. You know, so whether it's your meditation time or your yoga time or his walking time and he wants to play cards with, his, with a bunch of friends, give each other space so that you're not all the time together. You don't need to be together all the time. And that the fights will reduce there'll be happier times, happier moments which you will spend together when you do get together. But that space is required and they all, I mean, all men need their space, so do women, you know? And it's not necessary that you um, both have to do things together all the time. It, it's just not necessary. It's not required and it's, um, it's absurd, in fact, for any of us to think that this is the norm. It's not the norm. I mean, you've lived for 40 years doing dif different things, so that should continue. Thank you. We have two more questions. Uh, uh, one is from R.K. Jain, and I'm not very sure whether you would like to answer this question in detail, but still, I'm getting up in the night around two or three times uh, or th at 3 a.m., 2 or 3 or, or 3.30 a.m. and not able to sleep most of the time. Sometimes I take a sleeping pill. I am of 65 years of age. So I guess he wants to know what to do. As we age, our sleeping patterns differ. It reduces. Um, but if you're getting up a bit too often, you need to uh, uh, figure out whether there are um, issues that are perhaps disturbing you uh, mentally. Because a lot of the time, our sleep patterns is because of the thoughts that arise in our mind. A. B, are you eating too late? You know, um, perhaps you need to change uh, your eating time. C, are you exercising too late in the evening, which you shouldn't be doing? Uh, now, most elderly people don't, but I'm just um, saying that these are, you know, you, 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 uh, you raise the body um, temperature, everything in terms of um, um, doing things. So you, you need, towards the evening, you need to A, eat earlier, lessen your exercise um, around so you're not walking too much, uh, too late, for example. And uh, also figure out whether it's the thoughts that are pervading your mind as, um, you know, you. Ouch, I think we have 
lost you once again. Uh, this is the problem that we face with the Zoom. Connection do go off. You're back. Uh, Am I back? Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, so we'll ask the last question for the day. Uh, this is from uh, somebody who wants to stay anonymous. My father is extremely insecure financially and hallucinates. The problem is that he keeps calling our office staff and senior lawyers without having a knowledge of the subject, keeps giving advice. He's 84 years old and has multiple medical issues. He obviously wants to stay in control, but at 84, I'm sure he has his faculties about him, although he hallucinates. So I don't know whether you've taken care of his hallucinations, but he does need uh, treatment for that. You can't just leave him, um, leave him be. So that's something that you need to take care of, certainly um, with a good doctor or a good GP who will advise you further. Um, now, in terms of um, giving instructions to lawyers and um, CAs and things, people like that, uh, he has the right to do it if that's his uh, money. Obviously, provided it's all uh, within, um, it makes sense. But why does he not take you into account? I mean, why is he not um, you know, confiding you or discussing things with you? So is it because he's suspicious? Is it because he just wants to remain in control of the whole thing? Um, this is something you need to discuss without uh, getting into a huge argument uh, about it. Uh, and have a frank discussion with, uh, with a lawyer in front of you so that they also know where you're coming from. Uh, but your dad needs to remember that even if he's 84, he hasn't lost his faculties totally. So you have to give him the benefit of the doubt to be able to uh, manage things, uh, provided it's not uh, in terms of ruining all of you. Uh, so somewhere you need to uh, be there, but you need a trusted lawyer and a trusted CA helping you out with all this. Yeah, thank you. Okay. We've got three more questions. I'm sorry, I thought it would be only one, but, uh, and this person who's just asked this question says, uh, fantastic answer, thanks a lot. Thank you, uh, you're welcome. So there are three questions which I have. The first one is, and I feel that this is a question that was asked earlier, but nevertheless, let me uh, uh, say it. I'm 70, wife is 68, uh, feels sex I feel sexually interested, wife is not interested, what should I do? You know, the libido of men and women differ. Uh, and particularly um, if, um, you know, particularly as you grow older, uh, men are, are more, uh, you can, you know, can continue, uh, um, are more sexually active, uh, more so than a lot of women are. I'm not saying all women, but a lot of women. So, and depending on, um, you know, your, uh, um, you know, in things like, for example, if you're into meditation or spirituality, all that sort of lowers um, uh, the urge to have sex in many ways. So, um, both of you need to have a chat about this and figure out how she can help you out if you need her or you require her. And uh, uh, for you not for you to realize that you don't uh, impinge on her if she doesn't want you. Uh, not that she doesn't want you around, but just physically in that sense. So uh, uh, a good old chat, a friendly one um, without uh, getting hurt to, you know, getting too hurt about it. Um, is probably um, the right medicine to start with and for you to take things forward. Uh, but she needs to keep you happy also. So figure out what you all can do between you. Otherwise, go to an expert for help. Uh, thank you. Dr. Das, uh, have you had such uh, cases coming to you on a, uh, on a professional basis? You Perhaps. I mean, yeah, I've had a couple. I've had a couple of people who've spoken to me about it. Um, but, you know, mine is more a counseling. I'm, I'm not a person who sort of prescribes anything or I, I don't suggest um, ways for people to do things. So it's all about changing the individual and getting them to figure out how to find an answer to a solution. That's what counseling is all about. Um, so, yes, I have had people um, to answer your question and... Um, 
they seem to have uh, managed and um, you know been successful in terms of leading their lives um, um, in a fulfilling manner. And I guess that's what it all is. Uh, it's all about. And those of you who would like to reach across to Dr. Das could get in touch with us, and we will connect you. And perhaps you could do a, a tele consult with her. We have a question uh, from uh, Arjita Sopti, who mentioned about her, the place that she's working with. But she says, generally, as a psychologist, we advise no naps longer than 30 to 40 minutes and not after 3 p.m. in the afternoon for a good sleep hygiene. Does that apply to seniors as they frequently take naps in the afternoon? You know, uh, remember that as you grow older, your the whole your whole body pattern changes, and I'm I feel very strongly that if you need to sleep, provided you're not having to sleep, you know, every twenty minutes or every half an hour, um, it's important to allow them to sleep as long as it doesn't, uh, you know, like from say uh, two thirty to three thirty p.m. or say from three to four p.m as long as it doesn't uh, affect their sleeping habits at night. Um, but getting a good night's sleep sometimes is difficult for the elderly. You know, getting just a, a eight hours um, right through because uh, they invariably need to go to the toilet um, or they get up, uh, you know, having dreams and things like that. So uh, uh, disturbing thoughts, so it's very difficult for them to then go back to sleep. Where do they make it up? They have to make it up sometime during the day. And that's why in a lot of elderly homes or even elders sitting in front of a TV, they, they just fall asleep um, after a bit. They, obviously, their body needs that. Uh, so don't not allow them to sleep, but you have to be sure that it's not happening from a medical point of view. I don't know whether you understand what I mean. I'm just It's a matter of concern if they're sleeping too much. So you'd need to figure that one out in the house. Right. Uh, so we have a we have the same person who gave this uh, case of the son and his wife and the daughter-in-law conspiring with the with the mother. Uh, he has sent a message saying, "While well, I wanted them to stay with us, so they could be with us in times of need, like hospitalization, nothing of that sort has happened, and things have gone wrong." Uh, should I ask them to move out is the question he asks. Sir, if it's their home, I don't think it's fair to ask them to move out. And if you are asking them to move out because, um, you know, it, it's your home and you've, you need the space, etc. cetera, um, as a son, and I think it's your duty and it's very important for you to understand and uh, realize that someday this may happen to you also. You know, when your, your child grows older and they, they just leave you or ditch you or whatever the word is. So you need to take care and make sure that your parents are comfortably placed somewhere. Not just, you know, provide them with a house and say, there that's it. You know, you really, you it's a balancing act. It's your responsibility in that sense. And uh, you need to take it up in, uh, in all good faith because they have done what they had to do while they were bringing you up. Now, I know I shouldn't be saying this because all parents do what they have to do while their children are growing up. And uh, most parents don't expect their children to be looking after them. But undeniably, the expectation is there even if they don't talk about it. So, so if you have a situation, help them out, please. So is, there, is this person says it's my home and not theirs, but I, I leave it at this and yeah, um, you find a way where you can look after them. That's my main point. That's your responsibility. So there's an anonymous attendee who says, uh, perhaps giving advice to the to the 70 year old who's looking at uh, a sexual relationship with his wife. He says, going on a vacation might help. Uh, That's a good you know, idea. Uh, Dr. Das, if you remember, we have had uh, in the last two sessions, there's somebody who's had his schizophrenic son uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he has said that uh, he has ad he, regarding his schizophrenic son. I intend to admit him in Sanjeevni Foundation in Uttan Bayandar. Uh, doctor in charge is uh, somebody he's mentioned. 
So uh, all the best, sir, if you uh, decided this and I'm- Excellent, excellent. I'm sure things will work out uh, for you and I hope you are safe. And, and that's what we all pray for. Dr. Das, again, uh, it was excellent having you here. Thank and you. Thank you for, uh, you know, answering all the questions that have been raised so painstakingly and patiently. Thank you.